We're going to go ahead and get started if you don't mind recording. All right. Welcome, everyone. Um, we are so glad that you are here today. My name is Sarah McAllister. I use she, her pronouns. I am the Senior Associate Director of the Office of Alumni Career and Professional Development. And we have Nina Raffo here with us. She is our Assistant Director um, in the same office and she will be all things tech. And so if you have any issues, if you have any backend questions, please feel free to direct message her. Um, so today's session, as you can see from the um, slide, is going to be uh, about energy mapping to increase career clarity. So if you joined us a couple weeks ago on um, career mapping, it's a similar style. So it's going to be a pretty short and sweet session today. I'm aiming for 15 to 20 minutes. It's going to be um, mostly about like, here are some tools. Here are some things that I have used throughout my seven years as a career coach that I think work really well for anybody in any part of their career journey. Um, and then the idea is to take these tools and then to use them um, for reflection, for clarity. And then you, you're always welcome to come back and uh, reach out to myself and Nina for any questions and um, if you have any clarity. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Let me jump in the chat. Great. Thank you for introducing yourselves. Keep that going. Um, we're so glad to see everyone from all over the country. It's very exciting. Okay, so as you can see today's session, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I think, how I define energy mapping, um, how I've used it again in my coaching sessions, how to get started. We're also going to go into a session or a um, an exercise called motivational skills. Um, Nina was an absolute magician and created this beautiful PDF uh, that you can use and you can take away and she'll put that in the chat in a little bit. And then we can also, and then I'll also talk about like, okay, well, what's next? How do you use this? How do you move through this exercise? Um, again, to get clarity on your careers and um, just where you are currently and where, where you might want to go. I really want this session to be um, interactive as possible. I am gonna be throwing some information at you. So we're gonna kind of toggle in between, but please feel free to throw questions in the chat, um, share any like reactions, thoughts, suggestions. If you've done an exercise like this before and it has worked differently, this is again, a tool to help you all. Uh, but if you have suggestions on how to make it better, please throw that in the chat as well. All right. Okay, so um, as you can see from here, you can kind of read through and I'll talk through it. Um, the way that I've used this tool throughout the years that I've done career coaching, um, again, is any time that I'm working with an alum who is either early career, mid-career, trying to figure out what they want their last career to be, is just curious about how they work best or is also feeling burned out and trying to figure out how to move through it. So it's really, this, this exercise is for anyone at any point in your career. So it's a tool that allows you to examine how you spend your time and what works best for you throughout your day, throughout your week, right? So that's just kind of the framework I want you to get into. It provides clarity for scheduling your time. It creates a framework for conversations with supervisors. So if you're finding yourself kind of stuck in a role where you're doing tasks that you're not quite sure that you like, or maybe you're really good at, but you get really bored. These are, this exercise is to help you figure out again, how you work best. And then if you want to have a conversation with your supervisor, or if you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to figure out how to schedule your time differently, this tool is, again, it works for everyone. So again, wherever you are in your career journey, this exercise is for you. Um, I realized that I totally skipped over one quick housekeeping. So this is being recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Um, Nina will drop the link in the chat uh, and you can also access, so you'll be able to access this recording this afternoon, but we also have over 50 other sessions that we've done. And so you can access those um, videos on the YouTube channel, um, as well as future sessions. So 
I think that was the last thing that I needed to do housekeeping wise. Okay, so I'm gonna spend a little bit of time on this slide, um, especially like for everyone that has just joined, welcome. Um, we are just getting started. And uh, the, the meat of this presentation today is right here, right? So and the energy mapping tool is honestly, it's pretty simple, but it's a way of thinking about how you spend your time that I don't think that we're honestly like trained to do or we talk about a lot. And so as you can see right here, this is what I want you to do and I want you to think about, right? So think about the tasks that you complete that you are responsible for in a day or a week, right? So you decide kind of how, if you're, if every single day is kind of the same, focus on a day. If you have a full week that every day is a little different, but kind of over the span of a week, you, you know, again, I would say like, if your week is kind of the same, um, you decide, right? It's a bit of choose your own adventure in terms of what you want to focus on. But again, think about like how you spend your time, right? So once you, once you kind of focus on that, I want you to write down all of the tasks that you do. And I'm going to show you a slide because I did this earlier of, uh, I spent literally 10 minutes. I could spend a lot more time, but this was kind of the meat of what I, what I spend my time on. Okay. So you're going to write down all the things that you do. I'm talking minutia, right? Check emails, respond to emails, make phone calls, cold calling, whatever it is that your task is, write all of those things down. Once you have a pretty exhaustive list, go back to it and write. So think about like each task, which one gives you energy and which one takes energy away. And as you can see from the next slide I'm about to go to, some of the things can add and take away, right? So they can be both. There's no wrong answer to this. But I really want you to think about like, again, like what are the things that like you get into the flow with? What are the things that you're just exhausted about? What are the things that you avoid? And just kind of without any judgment, go through that list. All right. So I see some questions. Oh, great. Feel free to add any comments into um, into the, into the chat. I'm just trying to keep up. Awesome. Okay. So this is pretty straightforward, right? So I'm going to show you mine. Okay. So again, I literally spent like 10 minutes on this. Um, I'm not going to read through, but I'm just going to kind of highlight some things, especially the plus minus. So as I was going through kind of just like thinking about my day, these are the main things that I do. Depending on the time of year, I do, we do events, we do different programming. Sometimes I travel, I'm traveling this weekend for an event. Um, but the bulk of my time is what you see here. And I have to be honest, oh, I even forgot a little like minus over there. Um, some of the things surprised me, right? And so some of the, I really enjoy career coaching. And I really enjoy spending time with my colleagues and brainstorming and thinking creatively, but some of those things are also draining and it just really depends on where my energy is, where my time is. Um, and so this was more of just kind of an example of what it could look like, especially just like almost like a quick and dirty, right? Like if you don't have a lot of time to spend on this, spend 10 minutes and just jot some things down and I had my own aha moments of this, right? I was like, huh, okay, well, sometimes meetings are draining, but sometimes I really like them, right? And sometimes submitting expense reports, as much as I dread them, it also feels really good to submit them. And then I get to like cross it off my list, right? Um, so the, again, this is just a kind of a quick example for you. Okay. So once you've done the energy mapping, once you've spent a little bit of time on all the things that you've focused on, I kind of want to, I want, I'm going to encourage you to put that to the side. And so then the next thing that I want you to do, so this is a twofold, I'm kind of sneaking in this other tool, because I know I just said energy mapping, but we're going to talk about motivational skills for a minute because they go hand in hand. So if you take a minute, I'm actually going to, um, 
stop sharing and open the PDS that Nina created and share that. Hang on. Um, so I can't, I mean, honestly, I think both of these exercises are just as important, right? So I think you should do them both together. If you only have 10 minutes, do the energy mapping and then go from there. And I'll continue the conversation after I talk about the motivational skills, but I highly encourage you to do both if you can. Um, so again, Nina dropped this in the chat. Um, if you can't access it, shoot her a quick message. Um, and then we will also attach it to the follow-up email um, after today's session. So the idea behind the motivational skills exercise is to be really thoughtful on the things that you, I love this, right? You totally delight in using or doing. You enjoy doing it or using it very much. You like doing it. You prefer not to use it or you strongly dislike, right? So think about, you go through the, all of, take a look at these like examples, but also think about some other things that you enjoy doing, okay? So I'm just gonna quickly show you if you can't access it. So there's all these different like skills that we all do in our daily lives. It's pretty comprehensive, right? So there might be some things that we're missing, but I think it's pretty comprehensive. So you think about, put it in those, put it in those top categories. And then the second thing is, think about your proficiency level, right? So what are the things that you really enjoy doing that you're really good at? And then also think about the things that you really enjoy doing that you're kind of, that you're okay, right? Like you can do it. Maybe you're not the best, you can do it. And then what are the things that you're really good at that you could, that you could benefit from some training? And then you kind of go through the different categories. Okay, so pretty, pretty clear cut. I'm going to stop sharing for a second. So the reason why this is, is like, honestly, I think pivotal with the energy mapping is for two reasons. One of them is the highly efficient and highly motivated categories are really important to think about how you're spending your time. Is that taking up the bulk of your time or is that taking up what percentage, right? What percentage of your time is the highly motivated and highly proficient? And then honestly, the inverse, how much of your time are you spending on the highly proficient and not motivated? Because we call that the burnout. I kind of use this little circle when I think of or the little square when I think about that, right? So a lot of us, most of us spend the bulk of our time doing things that we're pretty good at, but we don't enjoy, not everybody, but it's just something to think about. And then it's also something that we put on our resumes, right? I am pretty good at logistics when I want to be, to be honest, right? Uh, but it's not something that I want to do all the time. And so if I were to then go out and find a job that was an event planner, I would burn myself out very quickly. I know that I need a mix of things and I know that I'm good at career coaching. I'm good at communicating. I'm good at logistics when it's not my full-time job, right? I have the skill set that I enjoy and I know that I'm good at. And so again, the motivational skills exercise, I think is so pivotal in allowing you to really get some clarity around how you spend your time, right? Okay, so we've got the energy mapping, we have the motivational skills. Again, the whole point of today is to kind of not fly through this, but to give you these te techniques and to have you try them out and then have some experiences on aha moments. So the, the idea is that you start to identify patterns, kind of like what I just shared with you. And then once you figured out, you know, again, I always kind of go back to Excel because I think it's just the thing that we all kind of understand. So some people are really good at Excel. Some people know how to navigate Excel. Some people don't know really anything other than inputting numbers, 
right? But if you're one of those people that is really good at Excel, but it really numbs your brain, don't A, just recognize that. And also I would encourage you to not put it on your resume and to not continue. So this is where the career clarity comes in, right? So when you think about the things that give you the most energy and the things that you are highly motivated and proficient in doing, those are the tasks and those are the things that you should try and prioritize at the moments in your day where you have the most energy. So it's different for everyone. Typically, we have the highest levels of energy between the hours of like nine and 11 or nine and one. You know, I think this, the people in Spain do it really well with the siesta, right? Like everybody gets, most people get tired between two and four. So maybe between two and four, those, that's the time where you take a walk, where you check your email, where you do things that don't require a ton of brain work. And again, right, you do the things that have the minus next to them in your energy mapping. And maybe even you do the things in the motivational skills where you're highly proficient, but not super motivated. So I'm going to slow down for a second because I honestly get pretty excited about this. The whole, I think the, like the gem of these two exercises is to give you clarity on one, are you in a job that is highlighting your strengths, is highlighting the things that you're really motivated to do and you're highly proficient in and highlighting the things that give you the most energy, right? We're not, all of us are going to do things. We know this, right? We're all going to do things that kind of take some energy away but where we have the clarity and the control to figure out how can we sandwich the things that give us energy, the things that take energy away and the things that give us energy in addition to those motivational skills, right? Like how can we figure out how to package that in a way that keeps us going and keeps us really excited about our work? On the inverse, I would encourage you to think about if you're feeling burned out, how can you use these exercises to tweak your schedule if you can, or to have a conversation with your supervisor, or if again, if you're an entrepreneur, to rearrange your time where you are feeling the most productive. And again, you are, I'm going to say it one last time and I promise I'll stop. You are sandwiching the things that take your energy away in between the things that really give you joy and excitement. And then have that conversation, reach out to us if we can support you with those conversations. Um, yeah, so at low energy times, we should do things that don't give us energy. Y yes, kind of. Yes, I know that sounded weird. So at low energy times, try and do things that don't require a ton of energy. And some of those things might take your energy away. But I guess, yeah, that's tricky, right? I would say more of like, at low energy times, try and do things that you don't have to think a lot about. So maybe for me, that is uh, submitting expense reports. I don't like it most of the time, but I can do it between the two and four o'clock in the afternoon because I just have to like clock away and, or, you know, sometimes it's um, scheduling appointments because I know that I can do that. Right. Um, thanks for letting us know that was clear. Um, I do. So, okay, let me think about, I know that I kind of th flew through this, but that was kind of the point. Um, I do want to just make sure that everybody got the PDF that Nina created. Um, we are going to upload it. Uh, we're going to add it to the email um, after today's session. And um, does anybody have any questions? Thanks for just joining us and hanging in here with this like quick exercise. Um, we're also going to share the recording. And so you'll have the, um, exercise, the, both the energy mapping and the motivational skills. Um, and then I just encourage you all to give it a try. And, um, again, reach out to us if you want to chat about it, or if you want any feedback, um, and we're so glad that you were here today. So thank you for joining us. 
Um, and we're going to just send you on your day. Appreciate you being here.